their deer, uh, yeah, deer run. The, oh, the guys, dear. the two guys who, who had uh, Deacon, they wrote the first book on the Affen picture. They knew and they had studied, uh, one of them was a scientist. And they knew about what was happening with these breeds. So they convinced the girls at Waloff to experiment. They found an undershot black miniature schnauzer, very small. And that was brought in. Now, how does one do that? Well, you have a litter of three, and you go to AKC, you send, I have a litter of four. And you get that number, and you give it to this bitch. And then you breed that bitch. And there were these, this, I think he was Episcopalian minister and his wife, out Weisskopf's, in Wisconsin. They sent, they, they, they bought a bitch from them. And it was a combination of Deer Run and the uh, girls from Walla. But they had so many little dogs that nobody knew for sure what was doing what with whom and where. And so anyway, they, so the Wise Cops, it's in the book, bought a bitch from, I think, Deer Run, and they opened the crate, and there were three. They bought one and got three? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Three for the price of one. That's pretty cool. Well, you know, they said, well, <laughs> what, what, why did we get three? And he, they said, oh, don't worry about it. Just keep them. They, well, where are the papers? Oh, we'll send you some. And they sent them some. And I actually, from that breeding, the Midwest, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, Upper Illinois, Iowa, there were a few breeders there, and their puppies, and when this wonderful lady who, right now I can't think of her name, but she's in the book. Anyway, she passed, and she had a little bitch called Lily Marlene also, and I had Lily Marlene, and I brought my Lily Marlene in, and we competed, and I unfortunately bought, beat her quite, because the head type was totally different. They got two of the <clears throat> litter, the experimental litter, and the whole thing, they bred them down beautifully. They were very typey and very short, but they're little heads and you would get a nice level bite. But that little look and that little pointed nose, and it was quite a bit longer than what we were used to. And, um, but that was used and I never bred anything out of that, but some other people did, and they did have some issues with longer muzzles. And not until much later did we realize why those longer muzzles were in that breeding, because there was a little miniature schnauzer. But by God, they saved the legs. Okay, yeah. You know, and so when they bred those in from different directions... They that helped with that chicken leg problem. It helped with the chicken leg. And then they started to say, well, we can go a little bigger, you know, and, that, and so they did that. So as a breeder, what was your priority? Oh, expediency. <laughs> I told you my first two dogs were the runts of their litters, and I paid $250 for each one of them. Right. And they lived in, you know, the food bowl. The right, bowl. curled up in the food bowl. <laughs> And uh, uh, so my, mine was, I had this thing in my head, an intuition, that they were going a different direction, and I wanted to go for toys. Right. And I had read the old standard and said, the smaller if of equal yes. quality should be of more value when judging this breed. So I thought, well, if the runt is... is healthy and happy, and, and by the way, he grew quite nicely. And, right. Um, and so I had, I had perfectly healthy and happy young dogs when I... Uh, so that, it was your mantra, right? Yeah, yeah. It was my mantra is, is not to... And by the way, I went out, and even in Timmy's litter, 
David Doan bought one of the big ones out of that litter, and I'd go out and beat him. You know, he, David <laughs> Doan was a big <laughs> dentist judge, and so I, he was not happy with me. <laughs> so they just stopped showing that, you. you know. So I just, I just said, you know, just take, take it for what it's worth. And of course, Alan was with us, right. so he would say, well, now, what you, how are you going to groom these little suckers? You know, what do you really want to do with this? You know, and so he said, you know, you got to fill in, and you got to, you want a short back, then you let a little grow here, but don't do this, don't comb it up, just smooth it out there, build in some undercoat, and, and then you know, you look at that dog, and if it's got a little of this going down there like that, it's got a nice top on it, it's shorter back, and so on. And we really concerned about uh, soundness, right? They got to be able to move. That's right. Yeah. Even though, you know, a lot of breeds, like the Japanese chins, early on, they said, you don't judge them moving. You just, just judge. The and, and then we said, got yeah, but you got to keep them walking. You know, they they got to be able to walk. Yeah, that's it. You got to get to the food bowl. And so we, uh, yeah, so we, we, we were always concerned about it. Besides that, the, the Athen picture is a very active dog, and it'll take on anything. Oh, yes. Any kennel or any place else. Yes. And so you better have them so that they can, you know, because sometimes they will let out with some bigger dogs. And, they were, and if the kennel help wasn't smart, Diligent, yeah. yeah. You lose the dog. Yeah. Yeah. I never. Knock on wood. I never lost a dog that way, except for the most beautiful black Pomeranian. I went into depression. I was actually sent home from, I was a teacher, and I was literally sent home to, to try to recuperate from this. And they all, the whole faculty group, sympathetic with me. I lost my Matthew, a little black Pomeranian that I had finished. Blacks were not very popular in the Pomeranian ring, and he was this great little dog. And he was the dog that I, it, I bought this house as a kennel. It was a kennel before we got there, and it has doors in every, every room. You know that. And so my bedroom door, I could just push a shot. Matthew lived on my bed. He was put out on the deck, you know, and... So he was brought okay. in, and he'd eat, and so on down there, and then they'd put him up there, and he would... But if there was a bitch in the area who was in season, he would go... The Silky Terrier um, bitches were in the living room, and... He he'd find his way? He knew his way through that door somehow, and he nailed a couple... Anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> I, I did have two litters of silk Arabian. <laughs> they were given away to very nice homes, and they were lovingly referred to as rug rats. And, and, but Matthew was put out in the wrong place, and a standing poodle and a Tibetan uh, terrier did him in. And I, I, you know, those, those kinds of things happen in a lot of places, especially if you've got mixed breeds or numbers of breeds, not mixed. But, and, and, you know, and somebody who's working who's not trustworthy to Diligent. how to do it. Keep him, you know, put him where he normally goes, especially, but he was so, thought he could take on any. Well, they don't know their size. No. And Athen pinchers are worse. Yes, they are. Absolutely. And you deal with a big dog and the Athen pincher, you don't leave them alone with big dogs. No, you, know. you can't. Especially if there's something in season, if it's a male, I mean, they think they can handle it. The whole world. So you watched the specialty today, and you watched the supported, or you watched the, um, excuse me, the sweepstakes. Give me a minute on what was, your, what did you walk away with? What is, where do you see the Alfred Pinscher now? The first supported entry of the Alfred Pinscher, which was very much instrumental in gathering and so on. We would have in every class four or five that would just uh -huh. tails or you know and they, those were all cropped and docked. But they were like you know and they were I mean you you had a hard time judging them because they were not at all trained and not ring ready right. And the thing that was most impressive is that. 99.9% like of these dogs, big. even if they showed with their tail down, which doesn't drive me okay, crazy. So we go on I mean, I give them a chance and say, 
you know, come on. You know. And the other thing that we both, Alan and I, agree upon, the breed was meant to get up on its hind legs and spin. And actually, yes. they are free enough in the front end to toss a ball. Oh, yes. This was something that the Germans talked about, that they, they could scoop a ball up. Now, that means that there is, they're not out in the elbows, but there is in the back. And the other thing that I thought of when I was breeding uh, the dogs, and I would get a dog that I knew was 11 inches as a puppy, later on in his puppyhood, I said, let's wait and see what this body's going to happen when it becomes mature. And I just set it back and keep it running and show what it matches and so on. And then when it was a year and a half, that chest dropped, right. that back opens, the chest drops, and they get a half inch shorter. People don't realize that that happens. You gotta wait. You can't push it. Yeah. Right. And by the way, that's hard on the judges because most of us show them as puppy puppies. So they don't really get, and this was more an issue a number of years ago, they don't really get an idea of what the alpha picture is. When they look at one that's really in the specials class and so on, they're going, my God, how, how much they've changed. And you know, from, from the puppy look, to an adult dog. Yeah. So, so you were were you impressed today with the mental Very, mental not, not preparedness? Just mental, but also soundness. Okay. Um, really pretty, and it, you know there was all ears and tails and so on, and nothing looked wrong. I mean, right. the ears were all very evenly set. And, and I know you people haven't been going around saying, "Now I'm going to breed for ears." Right. But 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 in the breed, it's that. Way. And I think even Which England and other places right have found that. And uh, rarely do you get one that has an set of course, ears. And then give it some time because then the ears will come down. Well, and you can tape a little bit. So. Oh, yeah. So your overall impression was a good one? Wonderful, yes. Now, I've been away for 10 years. Right. Haven't really watched except on Facebook. And I watched, you know, I watched The Guard. Oh, of course. Yes. Out in Wisconsin, and there, it, when, and, and we have a so part, dinner party, and people are there because they had no idea that there was Peyton Place right there on television. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about who was married to whom, and who was sleeping with whom, and why that dog was winning, and whose lover is now judging, and there's that Pekingese, thing, and the judge was his lover, and I'm going on and on. <laughs> they love it. They take notes. They don't know that Best in Show, the movie, is real. They, no, they said, you mean, and I said, Busy Bee. It's the Busy Bee. <laughs> Except <laughs> when she showed that poodle and its tail was down, I said, never would happen in the real world. <laughs> Annie says, a poodle's not a poodle if its tail is down. Now, I don't say that about an Athen picture. You know, you, when you're judging an affin picture, you have to depend on the outline and the look and so on. So the tail really has to be up most of the time. But if it comes back and it's relaxing and so on, and it's not, and the handler is not overdoing it to keep everything going, and I do think there was a tendency of some, some there was a little like a manic uh, trying to keep them up. Well, it's it's the feeling that they have to look a specific way. Pam talks about to the judges when she does judge education yes. that if they I stop, I know you did. <laughs> but the, the tail can come down, but when they move, you want that tail to come up. Going like this yeah. before we yeah. take yeah. off. Yeah. So I mean, but uh, any dog. I mean, you look in the work, working group. You look in the hound group. You look and the tails. The tails go down, and then as they move, they come up. Yeah, but we we do have a, a feeling that they have to be up all the time. I, I think that's you know I think it's hard on the handler and hard on and but the judges do use it. I mean they do get the dog, you know. And and as I think Alan did today, he when he reaches down and and would, the the dog should come up on the side. Right. It's not and the handlers. Encourage them to do it because that's so breed specific. Yeah. Remember, these were little monkey dogs, and they walked around on their hind legs, and yep. they had circus acts in Germany where they walked on high wires right. on their hind legs, and they were the often pictures who did it. So, I mean, they were dressed in monkey outfits, and um, I remember we had some sort of a, a 
protest against AKC for something back in the day, and they had this big event, and then we all did a costume show. And, uh, so I did, I have a pierced ear, and so I had this big gold earring, and bandana around my head, and this blousey shirt on. Were you a pirate? I bought Gypsy. Gypsy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, and I had, I built a box and I put a tape, uh, tape recorder with calliope music. Oh, perfect. And I put, put uh, eye hooks on, on them and I had six Affin pictures on the end of this thing. And so we practiced and they had a wonderful time and they, as soon as that music would come up, they'd go, wow. I say, up, you know, and so about two or three of them would come up on their hind legs and they'd dance around. The we lost to some very wealthy lady who was dressed as a German Frau. <laughs> Not in Affen pictures, but something other brand. Anyway, but uh, it was a costume contest. I thought I was by far. Of oh, course, well, yes, absolutely. Oh, and I had leather leather pants on too. Oh. <laughs> not chaps, not chaps. <laughs> there is a story, you know, and I do oh. have it written, and I did pass it out back in the early days about where the origin of the Athen picture, and it's the story of the old water lure. She, not Margaret, 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 um, Margaret. Lewis in Silverwall. 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 German lady, and she had this little information, and I filled it all out with all sorts of political innuation. In, in, yeah, anyway. So, uh, that this, the old water lure who took care of a in Germany, they had these gates that you had to pay right. to get through in the Black Forest and so on. And this old water lure only had three females left and could not find a male to breed them. And he thought, this was the end of my beautiful bitches, my leapshins. And so one, and he came home after gathering wood and so on. It was an early snowfall, but it was very bad. And he came home. And had made some stew, and he was sitting there, and he was his little Egyptians were all in his lap, and he was smoking his pipe, and he drifted off. And all of a sudden, the little darlings went crazy. There was something wrong, and they looked up in the window, and there was a little monkey with a hat and vest on in the window. And he said, "What is this?" And so he goes out the door, and there is a gypsy boy hiding oh, in a wood pile no. that he just brought in for the, and he says what ha what's wrong what 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 is this and you know and so the young man says i was chased out of town i'm a gypsy so i you know i'm freezing and so on and he says well come in he says i've got stew on and he says i could smell it and so then the little monkey comes down and they come in and he <coughs> long a story shorter is that he helps the old man bring in enough wood so this is late october and enough everything so everything's going to be wonderful and the little dogs played with the monkey were out in the fields and just having such a wonderful time because it got very nice and then he says you know it's so sad that i won't ever be able to have more of my darling little puppies and the little gypsy boy says yes i'm sorry but maybe Maybe things will change. And so the little gypsy boy says, I'm heading down, I'm going to meet a girl, and we're going to get married, and so on, but he's heading south, and so he takes off, and at Christmas time, the three little bitches start to deliver puppies who had these wonderful little brown pieces and these large who are just exquisite. Now, if you know about anything about the Germans at the time, they didn't believe that you know you can cross uh, right, right. You know, species and things like that. And so uh, that that was the story of the old water lure, and that's where the Athen pincher came from. Was this original cross between a real monkey? And <laughs> but it's such a beautiful yeah, little story. It's <laughs> so loving. I mean, the old Waterloo is this old man, and he's collecting the things, and, and he saves this because the uh, 
the youth are trying to beat this strange, darker skinned guy up and you know, destroy him and with his monkey and so on. <laughs> runs out of town. Oh, That's time. awesome. But, all right. All right. Do you like that story? I like it. Yeah, I haven't. It's illustrated, but I, I haven't published it yet. But, I don't want to interrupt your, your thing. But that's it's the, okay. I like the origin, the apocryphal. Like or oh my God! To get in, you know, that's priceless. Well, people won't, don't know about these things because the old, the often picture, the often. It is so, is so gone. But I also have a box of some of that stuff, or bags of it. So I'm going to give that to whoever the historian is, and they need to go through all that. Kelly Broderick. Broderick. Kelly Broderick. And just separate this stuff, saying this is history. This is you know this is what's happened, and this is where this Remember, information came from. Kelly Broderick and, you know. is Terry. Uh, she's good. Terry Graham's Terry daughter. Graham's daughter. Oh yes. I so know. now you yeah. yeah. And, that way you make yeah, sure you know. Kelly, I know Kelly. Yeah. Are you staying for tomorrow? No. He has to get the motor home. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. He has to get the motor home. Thank you for everything, Jerome. We really appreciate you taking this time. Matter of fact, we really were thrilled you were here today. Uh, thank you so much. I was not, actually my face all broke out because no. I was sort of, sort of concerned that, and I was wearing a leather jacket because it, I thought if the knife was there, <laughs> I could escape from it. I'm, I'm theater, 